welcome everyone. We will start this webinar shortly as more attendees arrive. Please stand by. Thank you. Okay, let's get started then. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're connecting from. I, I'm uh, Shashidhar Reddy, and uh, I'm technical marketing manager at Citrix, and I'm a part of Citrix Ready technical team. I hope uh, everyone is doing good at this uh, time and then keeping safe. I'd like to welcome you all to this Citrix Ready technical webinar series, where we showcase how Citrix and our partners have integrated to deliver valuable products and solutions to common problems faced by our customers today. Uh, I really uh, appreciate your participation here. So today we will talk about how one could leverage NetScout and Citrix products to deliver the best in class VDI user experience. And we have Ray Krug, Director of Product Marketing from NetScout along with us to walk through the slides. Thank you, Ray, for joining us today. Thank you, looking forward to it. Okay, so before we jump on to the uh, deeper discussions, I would like to let you know that this webinar is getting recorded and we will make this available on Citrix Ready YouTube channel, uh, channel later. There will be a few uh, uh, questions that you would like to ask. Uh, feel free to ask and then we will take up those questions in the Q&A session at the end. And uh, we would like to uh, encourage your active participation in this. So, uh, oh, we're, uh, so without uh, further delay, we will move on to the further slides and uh, walk through this webinar. So to talk about Citrix Ready program, uh, it's an end-to-end -end technology partner program, uh, which helps software, hardware, and service companies uh, who develop and integrate their products with Citrix technologies and uh, verify their products functionality within Citrix environments. And after uh, going through rigorous testing process, the verification process, these products uh, are approved as Citrix Ready verified products. So the partner solutions, which are verified as Citrix Ready uh, verified products, they are listed on our catalog, which we call it as Citrix Ready Marketplace. Marketplace. Sorry for that. It's an uh, online resource that, that customers can use to easily search and find compatible solutions uh, for the Citrix de uh, deployments or the environments. So partners can then also participate in a lot of joint marketing activities as well to drive awareness and uh, generate demands for their solutions. For more information about the program, uh, please navigate to citrix.com partner programs slash Citrix ready. And you can also reach us at citrixready at citrix.com for more detailed information. Next slide, please. Right. right. So we all talk about Citrix. Uh, I, I would say we all talk about cloud technologies these days, and uh, Citrix has already been there now for quite some time. Uh, and uh, it's been a few years that uh, Citrix has a lot many technology offerings on Citrix Cloud, and our entire workspace uh, service portfolio is available in the form of Citrix Cloud services. So these are readily available to consume now. Uh, so Citrix Cloud is basically a workspace management platform for IT administrators wherein uh, they could use this to design, deliver or manage uh, all the virtual desktops and applications and probably other services like file sharing, we have access gateways uh, and then content collaborations or micro app services. So these all services could be availed as well. So Citrix cloud hosted services are managed by uh, Citrix experts and are updated continuously. So IT doesn't have to worry about large scale platform upgrades uh, resulting in a secure evergreen envir environment that saves time and reduces costs. Citrix workspace also provides an uh, integrated experience to access applications and content from 
uh, any device at any anywhere at any time so citrix virtual apps and desktops uh, it's one of the our service is one of the services offered on uh, in citrix cloud so this is like be it on uh, uh, on-prem version or be it the uh, Citrix cloud version. Uh, it's a central component of the Citrix workspace. And uh, basically we have seen like in the traditional Citrix deployment, uh, the apps and develop, uh, desktops, which consists of uh, delivery controllers, storefront servers, uh, probably database servers, studio uh, licensing servers or Citrix gateways. And there are many other components that could be involved in this. Uh, in the traditional uh, deployments. But in the Citrix virtual apps and desktop services, the management or uh, the control plane for a customer deployment is provisioned and managed by Citrix on Citrix Cloud. So uh, customers don't uh, have to handle the core product installations, uh, the setups, uh, the upgrades or the configurations, uh, maybe the monitoring or the scaling of these uh, management planes as uh, that is all left to Citrix to handle and uh, the environments will be up all the time. So I would request to uh, explore uh, Citrix cloud services and get a feel of how easy it is to use by navigating it to citrix.cloud.com. Uh, With that said, I will uh, hand it over to Ray. Ray, over to you. Thanks, Shashi. Okay, I've uh, done the introductions. That's Ray Krug, uh, Director of Product Marketing for NetScout. Been with NetScout for the last sort of uh, 15 years now and explored various different uh, technologies. And uh, of course, one of them, uh, even as a, either as a, a solution architect or an SE in the past, one of the technologies I've explored is uh, Citrix. But I also work uh, with some of the technologies of um, the, the different cloud services as well, which is, which is kind of interesting. So, um, one of the things is I, I work with various partners and of course Citrix is one of them. What's important here in terms of the agenda that we're doing today is making sure that the workforce remains productive using these VDI services. NetScout is all about that visibility and service triage that allows you to get to the root cause of problems very quickly in these complex, uh, large, uh, network environments. So that's kind of what we do and I'm gonna explore how NetScout smart data gives you that visibility. I'm gonna give you a few examples of NetScout in action, smart data in action, um, show you what um, the Ingenious One and the uh, Vstream and the ISNG technology can do um, to solve and quickly resolve issues uh, in these environments. Um, then um, just talk a little bit about either deployment of these uh, infrastructures, either you do that yourself or we offer a managed service. And then finally, I'm going to summarize. So a lot to cover in the next sort of 40 minutes. And so I'm going to get cracking straight away. And so one of the things I always like to start uh, webinars out is just thinking about addressing the problem. What, what are the issues that IT uh, fear when it comes to, in this case, making sure that workforce remains uh, productive through uh, using of, of the VDI services. They've got to manage these VDI services and uh, they're thinking, you're thinking about various things in terms of can my users access the server services? Can they log in effectively? Are the profiles working efficiently? Because all those sort of things are kind of, kind of all in integrated into that experience of, let's say, logging on. And then, of course, once they've logged on and attached to their services, um, what about those uh, VDA uh, server or desktop? Uh, services are they responsive so there's a lot of things uh, top of mind when it comes to uh, trying to figure out uh, how you keep the op the service uh, running smoothly there's a, of course a bunch of other things actually that could affect that uh, user experience as it were in terms of licensing are there enough licenses uh, are the back-end business services healthy as well so it's all very well the front-end VDI working but what about the back-end services as well what's going on there um, of course, as more and more people are working from home, that internet access is getting more and more important. So, okay, are my VDI services effectively being protected against DDoS attacks? Because, you know, you get a DDoS attack affecting that internet access, uh, your v uh, VPNs or even your VDI front ends, uh, then things start going um, south very quickly. And obviously, they totally remain unproductive if they're under attack or if any of those services are degrading. The other aspect, of course, is change. 
we all know change and you know life would be good if there was no change but that doesn't happen in these networks these complex environments so okay how do i get visibility to understand what's going on through this change and as my network changes as my user profile changes as whatever happens uh, I, i'm going to have to be able to quickly react to get that sort of visibility so that's what keeps uh, you up at night and okay, so where, where does NetScout fit into this sort of uh, uh, equation? And what we do is assure and protect the connected world. So that's everyone, in fact. So trusted by 90% uh, of the Fortune 100 com uh, companies in more than, well, 120 companies, uh, countries, as it says there. What I like to think about is that we solve the most complex of problems in the biggest of IP networks. That's kind of what we do. And we provide the visibility to help to get to those root causes. Um, and of course, in the context of Citrix, Citrix is yet another application that's layered over this networks, these complex networks, and is affected by behavior of not just necessarily the network, but also the servers driving uh, that network as well. How do we do it? Well, okay, it's application visibility and service triage. And we have a technology called Adaptive Service Intelligence, which gives you enterprise visibility. So everywhere that you have uh, users or servers, uh, whether that be in the uh, uh, on-prem or in uh, the cloud, in colos or branches, etc., we give you technology that gives you actionable metrics for triage, triage of any application running over that environment. So those metrics are focused at making sure your service is available, reliable, responsive, high quality, and obviously secure as well. So that's what our technology does. Um, and Again, it's, it's per per pervasive in this new co complex network environment. We call it visibility without borders because our ASI technology, our smart data, is visibility of that user experience everywhere. So whether it's users coming into your data center across branch offices, SD-WANs, um, into your on-prem data centers, into your colos, maybe into your pu public cloud services or edge computing services or even deeper into your applications we provide visibility through all those tiers and allow you therefore if there's a problem to highlight where that problem is is it the uh, internet access is it the the wide area network is it something on prem or in your colo or is it actually something within the uh, application as well so how do we do that how do we get that visibility with our borders well it's basically uh, using uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the best technology out there, which is, of course, packet data, which is the most granular information about every interaction going on in your network. The trouble is packet data is complex. It's notoriously hard to decode. There's lots of it and it's flying all over the place. Yet, uh, if you can harness the power of the packets and uh, translate that into meaningful key performance metrics, you'll get somewhere to try and uh, get to the root cause of these complex problems. And that's what ASI does. It gives you that uh, translation, that deep packet inspection of packets in your uh, uh, network, wherever that might be. We can deploy in the physical world uh, with physical appliances. We call that the InfiniStream NG, the ISNG, but we also have that all wrapped up in software and we have called that vStream. So that will sit in, in the private cloud, in virtual environments, in the public cloud, in colos, et cetera. So we give you that view no matter where uh, um, you deploy your ap applications. So that gives us cloud visibility. And that means, of course, yeah, OK, north, south. So when I think about north, south, I'm thinking about the edges. Because when it comes to trying to do service triage, you've got a lot of edges, a lot of domains of responsibility across which your service is uh, deployed. So whether that be the WAN, or whether it be the internet, or whether it be your data center, or COLA, or the public cloud, each one of those are separate domains, and as they traverse across those domains, that's kind of a north-south view of, of things. So being able to get visibility at those edges gives you ability to help you triage, find where the problem is. Is it in the WAN? Is it in the data center? Is it in the COLA? But also that east-west capability, that deep insight that we have with that uh, within server-to-server -server communication as well. So it's really important. We're we're virtual, so we can actually get into that east-west interaction as well. The other aspect aspect is common situational awareness. Is that ASI data can be used for a lot of different use cases. So yes, it starts with network data, so we see it have insight to the network. But of course, the network isn't necessarily the problem, and, uh, and we all we, we all know that it's not necessarily the problem. But the insights 
that we get from that network traffic can lead to us understanding how applications are performing. So that could be your VDA, that could be your NetScaler, that could be your uh, database server, whatever it might be. So we give you that visibility into the application performance as well. And of course, as I've mentioned before, security attacks, what's going on in your network, that gives you visibility into uh, security uh, awareness as well. So that whole platform allows you that common situational awareness. And then of course, yeah, we, we, make, we take advantage of that smart data, that ASI data uh, in our Ingenious One platform, but of course we can also export that smart data to, to your own data lakes in, in different forms. So a little bit more detail on smart data, ASI metrics, adaptive service intelligence metrics, um, rich metadata, okay? So the important thing is the key performance metrics that we have, of course, because that tells you that something's going on at a certain part in your infrastructure. But of course, we don't throw the valuable session and packet data away. We keep that so that you can do uh, forensics later and get to the deep dive of the problem if you need to, or provide that evidence to DevOps or that evidence to the vendor to actually help uh, sort out the particular problem for the particular device that we're spotting with those key performance metrics. Those metrics are range, as I mentioned before, not only about application response time, successes, that deep packet inspection that we can do, take a look at errors and failures and those sort of things going on within applications, but also the network responsiveness. So we can differentiate between whether the network is affecting the performance of an application or whether the application itself is responding slowly because it's sort of overutilized, over-resourced or whatever it might be. There's a lot of insight that we get within the uh, uh, smart data uh, and basically because we're, we're looking at that uh, TCP traffic and we can see so much information going on. Again, I'll give you a few examples um, throughout the presentation. Um, then of course we do voice and video as well. So voice is another application running over the network. It's latency sensitive, just like Citrix traffic, of course. Um, but we actually have the ability to actually decode what's going on in the voice and seeing whether it's good quality and allowing you to triage problems in uh, voice and, and video environments as well. And uh, finally, of course, VDI. And that's sort of where it comes down to this uh, sort of uh, presentation when it comes to Citrix. We're able to see deep into the uh, Citrix protocols and, and take a look at what's going on there to help you know whether it was Citrix or more po possibly it's not Citrix. So. With smart data, of course, we can do a lot of um, um, uh, uh, things, and we use uh, uh, we, we tra translate that smart data and give it to Ingenious One for the various workflows. And we have a series of unified workflows to allow you to triage in these complex environments. They start off maybe maybe your triage process starts off with a dashboard. We have all the elements of the service, and I'll show you that. Um, in, in the presentation. You can use that to then drill down to specific service monitors. So think of those as apps, uh, whether that be web apps or v v VDI apps, or whether it be uh, database apps, service monitors to give you granular information about how those applications are performing. Discovery, dependency discovery. So that's in this complex environment that you have. It's kind of really important to understand that service chain, how the users access the NetScaler, how they go in to the different layers of the application. And I'll, again, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about dependency and the importance of that later. Discovery, discovery about traffic. So often it's not necessarily the network that's the problem, but it's everything else that's going on at the network that may be causing that problem. So traffic discovery, analysis of links, and we have customers with, with hundreds of links that they're monitoring. Remember those edges that I talked about in the data center and taking a look at the traffic going on those different edges gives you a sense for, okay, is the congestion because of another app and not Citrix? Uh, is it that there is a network problem? So we can differentiate all of those uh, sort of aspects as well. So the other things that we can do, of course, is reports that we can actually have uh, monthly reports uh, to give you a view as to how your service is performing. Again, if you don't want to look at dashboards and reports, we have alerts, alerts, thresholds, baselines, machine learning, uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 alerts, taking a look at uh, root cause analysis. Uh, so a lot of things where we'll just tell you where the particular problem is, maybe a uh, service slowing down because it's extra, extra busy as, as an example, a simple example of that certificate security analysis, see how strong your ciphers are around the actual infrastructure itself. And search, 
the search one is kind of really cool because it's like a Google of everything that we're recording. Uh, pick an IP address, find out what's going on, uh, who that IP address is communicating with, what apps that 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 uh, IP address is um, uh, looking at. Pick an app, see where it is, see where we're seeing the traffic for that app. So the search is extremely powerful just to sort of figure out what's going on in these complex environments. Um, and then, of course, forensics. As I remember, I said, we don't throw away those packets at the end. They're still there. So once you've discovered by a key performance metric there's an issue, you can drill down and, and get into those packets, use them as evidence. As I said, for that vendor, if there's, say, a bug that you're trying to sort out or uh, anything like that, the packet forensics often tells you the truth about uh, what's going on. So that's NetScout in a nutshell in terms of high level. What about Citrix, Citrix uh, partnership and all that sort of thing? So we are obviously have a strong technology partnership with uh, Citrix uh, for effective end-to-end -end performance monitoring across those public and private cloud data centers. So that's kind of uh, what we do. And we go that next steps of, from some of the native tools. And I think I've talked about this already, uh, holistic service triage, so when it comes to your network, it's not just Citrix. I know you're thinking about VDI as being, okay, important to get my workforce working, but actually there's a lot of other things going on in your network uh, that are important and could be affecting Citrix or Citrix could be affecting. So what NetScout offer is that holistic service, uh, service triage through that visibility of all applications running across your network. Uh, so that's one aspect that's kind of different to native tools. The other one is um, network and application latency. Uh, so the idea of saying, although we're seeing this through the eyes of the network, the packets, we get visibility of how the network is performing and how applications are performing. And that's really cool. So we're not just telling you that the network's wrong just because we're looking at the network. We're actually seeing if it is wrong, yeah, fine. But if it's not wrong, we're also saying that they, those application components are actually behaving slowly. So uh, again, throughout uh, uh, some of the demo shots, I'll, I'll uh, give you a sense for that. Capacity, okay, so this is a good one. Capacity, um, network capacity is one type of capacity so that you can see whether there's lots and lots of traffic, of course, we see that, that's dead easy. Uh, but also you've got capacity in terms of performance of servers, VPN capacity, net scalar capacity. So as things get loaded up, they slow down. And so we're actually able to see that, as I said before, by that the application latency, we're able to see them slowing down and therefore giving you that information perhaps before they break. And the final one, that continuous visibility through constant change. So everything's changing on the network all the time. We know that mistakes happen, even though that there's policy, even though there's automation. So we can pick up what's going on. And, and I've got an example of where policies, changes have made a difference to what's going on in the network, and that's caused problems with Citrix BDI. So stand by for uh, some of those use cases I'll give uh, a little bit later. So let's start, holistic visibility across the Citrix landscape. And what I wanted to do is start there by thinking, okay, about let's say the home user or the edge. Um, if we've got like users accessing uh, from the internet into your DMZ, to your VDI front end, your NetScaler, uh, you've got various layers of, of what's going on there. And we give you that visibility as traffic is coming in, if we're instrumented at the edge of the network, into uh, from, from, your, from your home users to your VDI front end. Um, then, of course, we can see the next layer going from the front end to your back end apps. Um, so we're able to see both those sides of, of what's going on. Um, so back end VDI servers, what's going on with them, uh, health of the business applications running in the background there that are driving what the users are doing. So the VDI offers the front end, but they're leveraging something at the back end that is delivering your CRM system or your uh, inventory system or whatever it is that the users are actually accessing. The other uh, thing is the unsung heroes, the shared services like enablers like DNS and Active Directory. Again, that's another network protocol running around the network, which is critical to the health of these overall services. And uh, I mentioned before UCNC, uh, Unified Communications Voice and Videos, we have the ability to examine what's going on uh, in those areas as well. Obviously also critical uh, for, let's say, the home worker today. Instrumentation locations for that smart visibility with that NetScout ASI, as I mentioned, internet traffic inbound and outbound. Remembering, of course, now 
uh, it used to be all outbound. Now it's a lot of because of the users are remote. It's now the traffic's mainly coming inbound into your data center, which is kind of interesting. Um, VPN traffic visibility. So yeah, you've got concentrators, traffic's coming in, and obviously traversing those. Are they scaled enough to be able to cope with the traffic uh, that's going in and out of these uh, um, VPN concentrators? So having visibility either side is kind of really important uh, to tune what's going on in those environments. The VDI traffic, mentioned that before, coming in to the VDI service and also then the VDI traffic to the back end services as well. So there are the layers in the high level view of the traffic flows for uh, what's going on uh, in Citrix. So let's take a look at smart data in action. Now, I'm going to take it a layer deeper now because if you think about uh, again, what Shashi was talking right at the beginning, there's kind of a lot of elements when it comes to what's going on in that Citrix uh, service chain. And uh, there's, okay, a bunch of servers, the storefronts, the delivery controllers, the, the management, the license management, sorry, um, the server VDA, desktop VDAs, that's all going on just to make that server farm of Citrix environment uh, operate. Of course, then you've got the back end things like the apps and database and storage going on there. That's all really uh, uh, critical. You've got the front end, the uh, Netscaler load balancers, the ADCs. You've got the service enablers. They're all part of that service chain. And then, of course, you've got the uh, users uh, going out uh, of the edge, the plan LAN or internet or however they're accessing these various services. Quite complex environment. Remembering that Netscout look at uh, the network, they look at the packets, they look at the interactions between these different layers is kind of useful for this diagram because this Citrix traffic flows, it's, it's kind of a multi-tiered application basically. You've got your remote users coming in to your data center, let's say. Uh, so one of the fundamentals is the DNS and the AD stuff. So that's obviously one protocol uh, that's kind of important. Then of course, you've got your external access to the Citrix gateway, the Netscaler, TLS. Then you've got the back-end services that's going on when you are logging onto your store storefront and uh, getting access to your profiles, things like HTTP going on, things like the NAS or SMB traffic that's going between your uh, desktop VDAs and your home directories and your profiles and those sort of aspects. So they're, they're going on there. Obviously, of course, at lo not last but not least, but of course the Citrix ICA, the CGP, the CGP protocols that are actually layering on that those those channels associated with what what the user is actually trying to do to the uh, desktop or server VDA servers themselves. So that's kind of the front end sorted, okay? Uh, in terms of they've now got access to a desktop or they've now got access to a service. Then of course. There are a whole bunch of other things that go on on the, the right hand side of this diagram here where you've got the in a multi-tiered app you've got maybe a three-layered app or whatever it might be it could be a microservices app it could be a SaaS, it could be anything but there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on um and again when uh, the users are um have problems because they've logged into citrix of course citrix is a problem citrix doesn't work today citrix is slow today but as you can see from this complex chain events uh, it, it's not necessarily Citrix, Citrix that's actually causing the issue. It's typically not. And uh, also, when uh, I spoke to uh, system admins, they say it's Citrix is typically not the uh, problem, and also the network is not the problem. Um, of course, what's interesting, of course, is evidence in that network is something that you can actually use to figure out where the problem is. From a perspective of NetScout technology, this is the ingenious one service dependency deployed in that environment I just showed you. And what we're able to do is show you discovery because we're seeing those packets and how the clients are talking to the NetScalers, NetScalers are talking to the storefronts or whatever it is, we can see those interrelationships. Every line is a kind of a communication. It's not a physical interface or anything like that. It's a communication on a protocol from one layer to the next. And when you uh, unpick this, you actually discover that we've discovered those interactions, those servers, those VDA servers, those desktop services, those uh, gateways, etc. And when we show this to our customers, okay, yeah, it's very pretty, but often it's it's a surprise. Okay, sometimes uh, they see servers that they thought they deployed 
uh, sorry, decommissioned weeks ago, and they're still up and running and, 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 and all those sort of things. So we can use this to look at now, what's going on right now, and compare it with what happened a week ago, and we can actually see the differences of what's going on, but we can also use it to see how these service services themselves are so interconnected. Now, if we think about these lines, as I mentioned before, they're communications. So they're not just lines, they're protocols, and then each one of those lines effectively has a bunch of ASI metrics associated, those key performance metrics associated with it. And here's an example of a few of them. So, okay, latency and load um, of any of one of those sort of lines, as it were, and their top end reports, kind of some of my favorites, because when we actually translate all of that and give the, the top end view of that, at the, at, the, at the left there, we've got top end of server latency, slowest servers, we're independent of what they're doing, but we're looking at the protocols and how they're responding. And we can actually see here, we've got some ZenApp servers that are slow. In fact, ZenApp 3 in this case is the slowest one. We've got the VDI servers, we've got the net scalers that are responding slowly. We've got even things like storefronts, but we could also have uh, other backend services that are actually uh, slow. So ordering it like this is, is kind of really cool. Then we've got server latency over time, which is that one uh, in the top middle there uh, to see, oh, is it normally performing slowly? Uh, what's going on? That might be different. Um, is it suddenly become uh, slow? Um, then, of course, most accessed servers. Um, so new sessions. So these are servers that are suddenly gaining a lot of uh, sessions uh, and environments. So you can actually use that to see whether that's something uh, different or unusual. On the next row here, busiest service, so number of transactions. So see if your low balancing is working effectively by looking at how evenly distributed your uh, transactions are to your VDI servers, your storefront servers, your desktop servers, and, and, and the like. Um, then think about it from the reverse view, the worst performing clients. So the idea is saying you've got users accessing the net scalers, but you've also got uh, in that service chain, you've got service servers accessing other servers, and so they're clients to the servers themselves. So we can actually see worst performing clients, which well, again could be a server that's uh, talking to another one, but again very useful. And in that sort of mix, uh, the worst performing clients, we've got from worst performing being a, a Zen desktop to a user in Seattle, for example. So again, very useful. And then worst performing protocols, okay. That's where we see the depth and breadth of what NetScout can do. We're looking at everything so that we can see, okay, out of everything that's going on, what's my worst performing? I mean, we can go on with these metrics that worst performing in terms of volume, busiest applications, uh, packet rate for applications, so a huge ton of latency figures that we can actually do. Which means, again, in terms of performance and Citrix verified performance with, with, with ASI, we can do a lot of things. Um, and I'm going to quickly go through this one because, again, a lot to cover. Network and enablers, I've, I've talked about those. Performance of the front end uh, servers to see whether, okay, the net scaler is um, uh, busy or the gateway is busy or whether the servers, the VDA servers are busy, the back end uh, infrastructure as well, whether that be the SQL databases or the apps and, and desktop servers or even storage in the background. And uh, finally, of course, it wasn't Citrix. Um, the backend app. So again, have that visibility to out that sea of it's slow today, being able to distinguish of what component, what area is particularly slow. So I've got three use cases to take a look at in terms of um, problems, uh, poor user experience, but this time complaints across certain locations. So one is having the visibility of that and then having the ability to confirm and understand what's going on. So back to my complex service chain that's going on from the remote users back to the back end. Let's take a look at how NetScout sees this and, and what we do, we've got the service dashboard which breaks down those layers and we've got the layers, external, NetScaler, enablers, Citrix and the app tier. So pretty fundamental there. And we can see uh, in this case that the external layer is slow. So we can drill down to that and then see that external layer. So this is that traffic going from the uh, NetScalers to the users. And we've grouped those users and we're seeing London users have got the worst performance. So they're, they're the users complaining. And we can actually take a look at some of the metrics associated with that London traffic to the ADC. And we're seeing lots of timeouts in the transactions. And these are these are HTTPS uh, transactions as well. We're still able to see the performance of that HTTPS traffic 
and seeing that it's actually slow, the uh, uh, because we're, we're, we're basically timing it. Seeing where there's lots of trans retransmissions in, indicative of slow performance of the network, which is kind of useful uh, as a first use case. Um, so what we can do then is thinking that now we've decided that the London users are slow, let's take a look at the WAN link to London and see what's going on. Uh, we can see it's heavily utilized, yes, 100% there, why not? So now we know that London network is busy, but okay, why is it creating a problem for these users? Because you've got things like QoS, which are supposed to help you in these congested environments. So are the QoS? Uh, is the QoS uh, correctly set? Um, okay, is it really contending with bandwidth and that's why it's going on? Uh, and is that with desktop video that it's contending with or another particular application? That would be really useful to know in these environments because then you can start to think about curing it. Uh, one way, of course, is just to blindly upgrade the WAN, but that's not necessarily the right answer, is it? So we can take a look at that link, see that it's heavily utilized, see the distribution of traffic going on there and we see yes smb web Cip, citrix dns all those sort of things that we were expecting and we could see that over time um, so that's fine to know that's what's going on in the uh, uh, on, on that link but let's now divide it into that qrs settings high priority low priority take a look at my high priority queue and i can see uh okay my audio and video and sip are on high priority so the users in London aren't complaining about voice, but where's the Citrix there? There's, there's no Citrix traffic running on that high priority queue, which is perhaps a bad thing because, and we know it's a bad thing because people are complaining about Citrix in London. But what we can also do then, take a look at the best effort queue, and we see that net scalar traffic, yes, coming in from the London users, that HTTPS traffic coming from the net scalar, but it's now contending with all the other bandwidth on that particular link and obviously dropping and obviously causing problems for those users. But what we're also seeing is why uh, at the same time that the users are complaining and things are dropping, we're seeing big file transfers going on there, SMB file transfers. So why, why is that? What's, what's going on there? So it's really interesting how you can actually uncover, uncover certain things going on in your network uh, that you weren't expecting. Users are complaining, oh, there's a whole bunch of file transfer traffic at the same time. They're in the same uh, best effort queue. So cure, cures could be put the net scalar traffic into high priority queue, stop this guy doing the, 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 the transfer or figure out what's going on at that time. Because at the end of the day, that guy might not know. So we can tell you now, remember I, I, I talked about this search capability. We can actually see that user of that SMB traffic, that IP address, we can see who it is that's doing that. So it's all evidence to actually help you get to the root cause of that particular issue. Again, it might be something else going on, but I'll talk about that in, in, in the next part of this presentation because it's kind of a different angle of why users might be complaining. So remember I said about change being a bad thing. Life would be good if it's, uh, things didn't change. Anyway. Um, remote users in this case, slow to log in, slow to use services. So what's going on there? And uh, if you remember what I talked about in terms of policies and home directories, uh, I was subtly uh, uh, talked about uh, uh, earlier on, if I've got a remote user, they're accessing my uh, server or desktop VDA, you kind of want their home directory and their profile to be close to that desktop VDA, because you, you kind of want to make sure that all that's going across the uh, wide area network is the kind of the keyboard and screen things. So you don't want those profiles going on there. So that's a nicely set up environment. You've got the home directories and the, the desktop VDAs there. So that's good. But of course, we've had certain scenarios where maybe you've got an office in, and, and this is the reason why I bring this up is one of one of our, our customers. He's got an office in India, and uh, what they'd done was actually use the profiles in the home directory in the remote offices. And when the remote users access their VDA services, unfortunately, of course, those servers which are sitting in the data center in the US were actually backhauling that information of their profiles or home directory from India. So obviously their log going was going to be really slow. So that's kind of a bad thing, but you know, it's just a profile, it's just a profile, a configuration thing that's actually caused this particular issue. So two options, do you move their home directories and profiles back to the data center, that's one option, or do you stick the VDA um, in the remote location? Uh, another perfectly uh, feasible solution to what's going on. 
But what's really interesting about that whole thing is, um, and back to that previous use case, NetScout would see that traffic flying across that network. Remember that SMB traffic going from uh, uh, one user um, in the remote directory back to the data center? You see, that could be what we've discovered uh, through that particular uh, service as well. Uh, and in fact, I highlight it here, that SMB traffic. Okay, that actually was the traffic of the profile going over it. So as again, it's that sort of those senses that you get when you look at that network traffic and you peel it apart, you actually see, oh, I found a storage problem here and I'm using the network to actually help me uncover what's going on. So pretty impressive stuff. Uh, and a common problem. Um, third one, last but not least, compute shortfall. The idea that, okay, users are complaining, it's intermittent and it's random almost. Um, what's going on? Um, but again, using that service dashboard, looking at the tiers of the application, let's examine what's going on actually in that Citrix area. And uh, if you remember all the layers of that Citrix server, we were unpacking through the different application protocols going between the various servers from the VDAs to the SQL storefront, Netscaler back to the uh, VDAs, the uh, C uh, CGP, the ICA traffic. We're able to see which particular protocol themselves is performing badly, which means, of course, the servers at the other end of that protocol are performing badly. Seeing the Zen app servers uh, poorly for performing in terms of they've got uh, alerts and their slow response time, we can drill down there and actually take a look. Now, remember, there's a lot of information that we're gathering through looking just for a protocol because we're, we're looking everywhere. Um, we can sort that protocol by server and responsiveness. So that gives us, remember that top 10 report I talked about? When we sort these lists to the ones that are slow or timing out, what bubbles to the top is the worst performing uh, server. Uh, in this case, it's the Citrix ICA protocol for the Zen App 3 server. So we're seeing that performing really badly. So if you think about it in terms of users complaining, they don't know which app server they've actually attached to, they just know it's slow. Netscout knows what, uh, which, which server is slow. So you can actually use this information to actually drill down, okay, so what's, what's my slow servers? That's a slow one. I don't know why it's slow. Maybe I decommission it for a time being and let people go on faster servers. Maybe I investigate this further and uh, actually see what's going on. Uh, but that really is very powerful to be able to see from a latency perspective what's going on. So we can drill down. This is where the forensic evidence comes into its own in terms of, yeah, we've got more information than just saying the server is slow. We've got information about the sessions themselves and uh, drill down even to the packets as well. Not necessarily that that's, that's really useful in this particular scenario, but it may be to provide the evidence to uh, vendors. But we've also got another metric here, which is kind of really cool. And it is a TCP metric and it's called uh, server zero, server zero, um, issues and basically the way TCP works is um, it's a client server uh, communication and when a server gets busy it starts to say back off don't don't give me any more data and it sets this flag to only send me zero bytes of data so don't send me any more basically we detect that flag and we can see that it's going on and we can see which servers have got that flag on and that tells us that there's a resource issue on that particular server itself so we've seen this using that TCP monitor in this case, this TCP analysis, we're seeing server, server zero uh, flags set, and we're seeing the distribution of those. Uh, how, how, how busy is that server? How many flags are there? And then obviously, when, when do they occur? So that's another indicator that a server is being starved for resource. And of course, when it's starved for resource, your users will be starved for performance. So very useful insights into um, what's going on. So that was kind of three high level sort of use cases I want to take you through. The insights that you get from that network, which means it is not necessarily the network that's the problem, but also it means it's not necessarily Citrix that's the problem as well. It could be, if you remember that storage issue that I talked about. So this is talks about a, a customer use case where we've had, um, again, there's many, uh, but they kind of really are on a similar line. Um, when we deployed in this environment, um, a lot of information came to the top um, in terms of what was going on uh, on the network. And I think it was like tens, if not hundreds of thousands of users 
using VDI over a very big complex network over multiple uh, countries. Um, when you start to deploy this visibility, you see some things that are associated with the behavior of what's going on in the network. They may or may not necessarily be affecting performance, but they may not be the best way of operating your network. Things like traffic imbalance, uh, asymmetrical routing, uh, failure, fa failovers of, of, of links. So they happen all the time and um, the traffic recovers. Um, but okay, when we start seeing the traffic come in different paths, it may not be the best thing. So Netscout can really help fine tune and optimize what's going on in those scenarios. What, why, why was there asymmetric routing? Was it, was it by design or is it accidental? So if we can see that and therefore obviously we can help affect the performance of those areas. Then, of course, there were other aspects which were client impacting, and I've talked about some of these before, those TCP zero window events. So we're seeing starvation in some of the resources of the Citrix uh, uh, environments. Um, session resets, another TCP flag where the clients are, are, are resetting their sessions. Uh, retransmissions, okay, retransmissions happen all the time. Um, they're a good thing because if a packet doesn't get across to the other end, it sends it again. But obviously, it means you're increasing the amount of traffic that's going on in your network. That may then escalate to when there's a problem that's going on. Um, ICA. ICA is an important protocol for Citrix. It's that um, Metscality or uh, backend uh, VDA servers. Um, if you're starting to see round trip time increase, then you're starting to see uh, areas of network performance. So how far is your net scaler from your uh, VDA services? Uh, is it in the same data center? Is it another data center? What's going along those links? When you start to deploy net scale into these environments, you get to see at what point, at what link, at what sort of domain uh, the, the problem is. Uh, and in this case, they identified a bunch of servers that had abnormal response time. So a really cool use case where they've taken the information that you get from that packet data and really help with them resolve and get to the, the root cause of, of various services problems. So if that all sounds rather technical, and yeah, it is technical when you start looking at it. So the NetScout technology does give you that visibility with those dashboards and those service dependencies, gives you those, those tools to actually get to the root cause of is, issues. But what Netscat have also provided is a visibility as a service. So the idea is you deploy the Netscat technologies I've described into your environment, but you kind of get it managed by experts, uh, hands free. And what it's important about that is not only managing the environment, the Ingenious One and the ISNGs and the VStreams, but also taking a look at the data, um, giving you um, insights into what the data is telling you, what the ASI data is telling you. So using best practices in whether it be Citrix, whether it be UC, whether it be database, whatever they're looking at, they're experts in their field and they can unpick some of these things that I talked about um, because they've seen it before. So again, monthly sub subscription uh, to give you that sort of assurance that when you're deploying NetScout technology in your environment, you're getting the best out of it. So it's a really cool, cool service. And of course, out of that service, you get bunch of monthly reports telling you, I talked about top end, I talked about heat charts, talked about all sorts of things that we provide uh, with that service uh, to give you those um, health indicators, performance indicators, um, understanding what's actually going on in your environment. And obviously, if we find something, helping you find a way to get into the root cause of those particular uh, issues that we're finding. So, this is um, pretty good. I've got through all of that pretty uh, pretty comprehensively. And yeah, then Genius One and Smart Data, Citrix Ready, because we see we give you that valuable insight into that complex environment here. And unfortunately, it is. It's just just the way of the world. So we're seeing that complex, okay, seeing the end to end Citrix service chain, yes, and ancillary services and what's going on in the WAN, in the cloud, in the internet, uh, in your VPN and seeing what's going on. So it's a pretty holistic approach. How do we do that? Well, we're using the packets. So we instrument, get access to the packets, spans and taps, if, 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 if you remember what I said earlier on, single source of truth, and it gives you information about every interaction that goes on in your, uh, your users to your uh, application. So 
the data is there. We translate those packets into smart data with that ASI technology. Um, and as I said, ASI, because we are virtual and physical um, devices, as it were, uh, we can deploy uh, in the cloud or in your cola or on-prem, in your branch, in the SD-WAN, uh, all sorts of environments as well. Um, and again, common situational awareness. So that smart data can, uh, is used for different use cases. Uh, network, application, cloud, BDI, security, uh, and I've given you a few examples. I think one of the interesting things is, yeah, Netscout, yeah, we're using the network traffic to um, analyze what's going on with your application. It may not be the network, it may not be Citrix. On the hand, it could be, but it could be something else as well. So finally, as, as the title of the um, uh, webinar is, uh, Citrix Ready, delivering best of class BDI user experience. That's how Netscout does it. Um, and um, the idea is, if VDI is good, business continuity is good as well. So keeping that impact, uh, uh, revenue impacting application running at optim um, optimal performance and reliability when you need it to. Uh, holistic visibility, real-time analysis, efficient service triage, either through the Ingenious One platform itself that you can operate or through, of course, that managed service. Um, unified view, uh, collaborative approach with service assurance, that's the important thing. Um, the it's not Citrix, well, have a tool that will prove that and have a tool that will help you uh, distinguish what else it is. So it's not just a finger pointing exercise, it's something that you use to collaboratively uh, work out the problem. We had that London WAN problem, yes, that was a WAN, but was it a profile problem? <laughs> so that's where you can actually start to unpick what's going on. Uh, resources showed you a resource problem, a compute problem, it's an infrastructure problem rather than a Citrix problem. And of course, happy VDI means that you can maximize that investment uh, in that VDI infrastructure. So that's all I had uh, to talk about. Um, we've got a few more minutes. So Shashi, um, any questions? Yep. Thanks Ray for providing your inputs and uh, uh, letting us know how Netscout complements Citrix in providing a great user experience. And yes, now we have a few questions as well from uh, from the audience. Cool. Uh, the first question is, can Netscout monitor other real-time applications as well, like video conferencing applications? Ah, yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, actually, that's interesting because I, I was a UC specialist um, uh, when I joined um, Netscout. We were monitoring things like Skype for Business. Of course, that's evolved into things like Teams as well. And uh, yes, so the answer is yes. We have um, complex algorithms uh, that allow us to look into both voice and video uh, conferencing aspects. We're looking at that uh, UDP, that RTP traffic, and we're translating that into meaningful key performance metrics around that, like a uh, mean opinion score, um, tells you and grades the quality of that voice or video. Uh, but again, as I said, knowing that there's a problem with a particular user in voice is it's the same as the vdi concept is then you can use that information to see um where the problem is at what point during that conversation journey throughout your network it started to degrade so yes we have a very powerful uc uh, story uh, using this technology okay yeah great thank you yeah so the next one is uh, does netscout monitor netapp storage devices as well Oh, that's a good question because, you know, I was um, speaking to a sysadmin uh, a couple of weeks ago and they were saying, oh yeah, now, uh, uh, they asked me that same question, do we do we monitor the NetApp stuff? Um, and uh, well, actually, no, we don't. Um, the, the, the fundamental thing that we do is look at the packets. So, you know, the NetApp though devices use a protocol. If, if it's going over the IP network, they'll be using a protocol like SMB or SIPS or something like that, which is going to be interacting from, let's say, the VDA server to the storage or, or something like that. That traffic is running over the network. We are looking at the network and we can monitor things like SMB and we can monitor it in the same way that we can, uh, for example, the VDI. We can see number of transactions, how much throughput, where it's going. Um, in fact, the example I gave with the SMB, the um, the use case where the profile was loading across the WAN, it's exactly the sort of thing that we can do, but we're not monitoring the storage itself. So we don't attach to any devices and read uh, configs from devices. We're, we're just looking at the network traffic. Okay, yeah, okay, great, yeah, thanks. 
uh, I think the follow-up question is like, what if uh, my traffic is encrypted? How about then? Okay, so that's also uh, interesting. I, uh, yeah, how many times do I get asked that one? So the interesting thing is, if it's encrypted, okay, well, we can actually decrypt if you give us the decryption key. So that, that's the simple answer. Um, on, on the other hand of things, we, we've also got decryption appliances as well. So I should have said that one as well, where we can sit in line or passively again, if you've got the keys as well. So we have that sort of technology as well. Um, but failing that, I think uh, one of the interesting use cases I gave today was that traffic from the um, London users to the um, the Netscaler. That was HTTPS, that was encrypted. We didn't need to decrypt that traffic in order to see the performance of that traffic because we can use that TCP, those TCP metrics to see the performance of that interaction. Uh, because we've still got that head information that gives us some timing information. We can calculate how uh, the uh, endpoint is uh, performing. So again, we might not necessarily. But again, as I said, we have the ability to decrypt if we can get hold of the keys or sit in line. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Okay, so I think uh, we are at the time here. Let me see. I think we just got one pop up there. Um, okay, so the question is, what do I technically need to implement NetScout? Is it like Wireshark? Do I need switch port mirrors, etc.? Right. Okay. Yes. So there's a number of um, yes, there's a number of ways of doing this. Um, the at the end of the day, you need to get hold of the packet data. So yes, a mirror, a tap uh are the two main aspects uh that that you the, that you can attach to we we have other technologies as well we have also aggregation switches now aggregation switches we call them pack, packet flow switches uh we can actually connect multiple taps into a single aggregation switch and then aggregate that to an interface of uh one of the uh isngs or the vstream so it makes a, it possible to deploy some complex um aggregated um monitoring using and directing all that monitoring traffic from the different monitoring points to the vstream device as well so that's an, another technology that we have and then we have other uh technologies in the virtual world um good example is um service insertion in an nsx environment nsxt or nsxv where we can actually deploy vstream virtually into those environments and actually attach directly to effectively the hypervisor and see what's going on there so um, yeah, we've got a lot of ways of getting access to the packets, uh, but yes, we do need to have spans, taps, or service insertion technologies to get access to it. Okay. Thanks, thanks Ray for taking up these questions. And uh, as I was mentioning earlier, you could also reach us at citrixready at citrix.com if, if you have any more questions. Uh, we will uh, route you through uh, the uh, 11 departments will will uh, get in touch with Ray as well and uh, uh, we'll ensure that your questions are answered at the earliest. So with that said, uh, Ray, do you have anything uh, else to convey to the audience before we conclude this webinar? No, no, I think uh, thanks thanks very much uh, for having me today and I think uh, uh, what we've got is really complementary technology to uh, uh, Citrix to actually give you that visibility and that that bigger picture view of uh, not only what Citrix is doing is but also all your other applications in your infrastructure no matter how big or complex it is thanks thanks Ray for the presentation and uh, it was wonderful having you on this webinar as well and uh, I would like to thank all the audience as well who have taken uh, their time out and then have attended this webinar so with this uh, with that said we will conclude this webinar now i wish you have a safe day ahead and uh, a good time take care bye bye thanks bye then <laughs>